This is silent sound, subliminal mind control. This is how it works, very simply broken down. In step one, the unit on the top produces a steady tone near the high end of the hearing range, say about 15,000 hertz. In step two, which is the same part of step one, the hypnotist voice ranging from say 300 hertz to 4000 hertz is injected with microphone. In three you see the steady tone at 15,000 hertz accompanied by the hypnotist's voice from 300 hertz to 4000 hertz passes into a frequency modulator. The hypnotist's voice controls the frequency. Here in 4 you see the output from the frequency modulator which is that steady tone coupled with the hypnotist voice pass through the frequency modulator. Now you have an output that is more or less a steady tone that's like tinnitus ringing in the ears but only with hypnosis embedded and you see the curve below is magnified to show how the FM frequency modulated voice controls the timing of the transmitter's pulses. Here in 5 you see the transmitter itself. Each vertical line is one short pulse of microwave signal at a frequency to which the human brain is sensitive. Then the brain converts the train of microwave pulses back to an inaudible voice. Timing of each microwave pulse is controlled by each downslope crossing of the voice. That is Sharp's original 1974 method. Here in 6, you see the total output of the system going into your brain. And no, there is no conscious defense possible against this silent sound hypnosis. This was doable in 1974. This is not science fiction. This is science fact. Google it. You will see that there have been patents issued for this technology. It's a patented process. It's real. It's not imaginary. This is just the tip of the iceberg of what's being done to people in the United States and in other countries. The United States is the biggest offender, the biggest perpetrator of this evil mind control technology. Google it for yourself. Now I want to give thanks to Eleanor White for all her work over the years exposing this evil technology. For more information, check out my video silent sound weapon in organized stalking of US citizens with DEW's directed energy weapons. And there's no better source than Raven1.net for information on this evil technology. That's Eleanor White's website. There's a lot of information there on a lot of threats to we the people related to these evil technologies that have been developed by our government since 1947. This is very real. This is Silent Sound Mind Control Explained Part 2. Use of recorded brain waves instead of a hypnotist voice. In Silent Sound Mind Control Explained, we learn that a patented mind control device exists that can inject a hypnotist voice into a microwave broadcast. And then the embedded hypnotist instructions are transmitted via microwave hearing directly into the brain of an unsuspecting human. Microwave hearing was first discovered by Dr. Alan Fry in 1961. The patent for silent sound, U.S. Patent 5159703, issued October 27, 1992, states that the carrier frequencies used for silent sound subliminal mind control can be transmitted in real time, or recorded and stored on mechanical, magnetic, or optical media for delayed or repeated transmission to the unsuspecting human. The patent also states that many modifications and variations of silent sound mind control are possible.
The real-time transmission spoken of in the patent is the hypnotist's voice, as shown in the video Silent Sound Mind Control Explained. And this is shown as a tool used by organized stalkers to harass and control targeted individuals. The recording of brain waves that can induce any state of consciousness in a human and the subsequent use of those brain waves in silent sound broadcasts is another method of silent sound subliminal mind control. In U.S. Patent 5356368, Method of an Apparatus for Inducing Desired States of Consciousness, issued October 18, 1994. Frequency following response, or FFR, is used to take pre-recorded brain waves of specific levels of consciousness and transmit them into the brain of an unsuspecting human via microwave transmission. In frequency following response, FFR, a human's brain waves are made to follow superimposed frequency patterns, overriding the human's own natural brain waves. As a result, the human's thoughts are not his own, and behavior modification is achieved using this method. In other words, by studying the subtle characteristic brainwave patterns that occur when the subject experiences a particular emotion, scientists have been able to identify the concomitant brainwave pattern and can now duplicate it. These modified emotion signature clusters can then be broadcast over UHF carrier frequencies, i.e. regular TV and radio signals, and sent directly into the brain where they can then silently trigger the same basic emotion in another human being. In other words, if the emotional signature cluster for, say, a feeling of hopelessness and despair is being fed directly into your brain via unseen radio waves, you will feel those emotions. So frequency following response applied to humans via silent sound subliminal mind control is one of the ways that the entire human population of the planet can be controlled via microwave signals broadcast over TV, radio, satellite, and other broadcast means. It's real. What Dr. Persinger is saying is that virtually any mental state can be artificially injected into a human brain from an exterior source. The most frightening thing is that the means for doing this already exists in a fully operational form on a worldwide basis. Quote, the power levels for these amplitudes are similar to those associated with the signals generated globally by radio and communication system. Within the last two decades, a potential has emerged which was improbable, but which is now marginally feasible. This potential is the technical capability to influence directly the major portion of the approximately six billion brains of the human species by generating neural information within a physical medium within which all members of the species are immersed." Unquote. Dr. Persinger's message, minus the jargon, is that the entire human race can be controlled through the use of electromagnetic influence piggyback on television and radio networks or other technological means. Effectively, all consciousness is due to electromagnetic patterns generated within the brain. What we do is imitate what the brain normally does and apply it experimentally. Like, you know, where are these thoughts coming from? Those thoughts came from the Neuroscience Laboratory at Laurentian University in Sudbury, Ontario.